I'm going to show you guys how to screen print a bright white water based print on black shirts. Coming up. Welcome back everybody. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Let's go ahead and dive right into that tutorial. So the ink that we are using, you can get this from Catspit Productions. You can use our promo code MikeyDesigns at CatspitScreenPrintSupply.com. You'll get $5 off your screen printing supplies or your equipment purchase. And what we're using is the water-based Amex ink. It is the Aqua brand. We're going to, to use this, show you guys how to do a, a bright white print on black shirts. And we'll give a little bit of a review as to what we think about this ink as well. Okay, so let's crack this open and take a look at this ink. As you guys can see, it looks very creamy. Here's a little spatula that I'm going to use called a bucket scoop. I'll leave a link down in the description where you guys can get this. But this ink is it's nice and thick for a water-based ink very creamy so that is awesome the print that we are going to do is the shop gnome print and I am going to make sure this is nice and centered on my press here and I'm gonna make sure it's about three fingers down from the collar so that the edge of my palette is right here so we got everything all nice and centered on our press now I'm going to go ahead and tape off my center marks and I just like to use regular old masking tape. And the emulsion that I am using guys is Ulanos TZ emulsion. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can get that as well. And this is a water-based emulsion. I just have a standard 70 durometer squeegee here and what I'm going to do is load a good amount of this ink into the screen. You want a healthy amount when you're doing water-based printing and I'm trying not to mash this ink down into the actual image area. So that way we don't end up getting a heavier print down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and flood this up real quick. When you are doing water-based printing, you want to be sure that your screen stays flooded, otherwise it can dry out in your image area here. You also want to be sure to cap off your ink so it's not exposed to the air and drying out. Okay, what I got here before I do my actual production run, I'm going to take this rag shirt that we've done other test prints on and we're going to do ourselves a test print or two and see how things are looking. So I'm going to make sure my screen's nice and flooded. I'm going to give it a nice firm hit. I'm going to back flood my ink. And there we go. There is our first hit. Let me go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a close up. As you guys can see, it cleared quite nicely. We generally do this print as a one hit print so that way it kind of has that wash look. So that is how we'll end up doing our production shirt. But for the sake of this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash this and then I'm going to hit it again. Okay, so I'm going to bring my flash on over. This is just a one station press. And I'm using my Ranar flash here. It is 18 by 20. And I'm going to let it flash for about a good eight to 10 seconds and see what we got here. Great. Looks like it's nice and flash. Nothing is coming up. So let's go ahead and take our screen and we're going to hit it one more time. I'm gonna back flood and make sure my image does not dry out. looking pretty good I think I'll hit it just one more time a little bit lighter of a pressure and there we go we have a nice bright white print on a black shirt I'm gonna take you guys off the camera stand and we'll get a close-up look at that 
We got ourselves a nice bright white print. Let me get out of my shadow here. But this is a nice bright white print, even with a 195 mesh. So what I'm using here is a 195 mesh screen and I got this bright white of a print. And you could even go lower, you could use a 110 and get that much brighter of a print. And I mean, this is pretty, pretty bright. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm really digging this ink. We're gonna definitely get some more of this and do some more water-based screen printing. I am just using a traditional flash. It's not a forced air flash. However, you will need forced air to properly cure your shirts. We do have a forced air conveyor dryer behind me. We are using our good old Turbo Jet Star by Ranar. It is a eight foot by 24 inch belt. This dryer has served us quite well in doing both water base and plastisol printing. Most of what we do is plastisol printing, but we got this dryer for the sake of curing our water base ink. And we have our little jet air button here. So we got our jet air on. Now I'm gonna grab my shirt and we're gonna run it through the conveyor dryer and let it dwell for about a minute and a half. It's saying to cure it at 270 to 290 degrees for two to three minutes. completely forgot about this and wasn't even thinking about it but this is a 50 50 shirt so we do have some dye migration going on it is nice and cured and we'll show you what some dye migration looks like as you can see at this point it's not as bright of a white you can see how bright this print is however you can see we got a little bit of dye migration going on there so it's looking a little bit gray so I ran off another print here on a cotton t-shirt looks great i did do just the the one hit like we're going to do with our production t-shirt because we do want it to have a little bit of a, a vintage look and it looks great so you guys saw with doing the print flash print it was a nice bright white as long as you're not using a 50 50 shirt or polyester like me like i did in the example you'll you'll be just fine let's go ahead and do our production shirt I'm going to make sure it's nice and centered on my palette. There we go. I'm going to take my lint roller, make sure there's no lint underneath our print. And we're going to do this as a vintage style print. In the first example, we did a print flash print to get a nice bright white. But here's how you go about doing a vintage print. So I'm going to hit this a couple times just to make sure we clear our screen. And there we have it. We have our vintage print. Now I just need to run this through the conveyor dryer and cure this ink. The shirt is nice and cured. It looks great, it feels great. It'll feel even better once this is washed. And with putting down the amount of ink, we're going to get the look that we're after. And we're going to go ahead and pack this thing up and send it to one of our clients. Shannon, what do you think about your water-based shirt? Wow! <laughs> no, really, what? No, I think it looks great. I yeah. really do. I, I yeah. like the way it is. I like the vintage look on it and yeah. I like how smooth it is and I, our client's not getting it because I'm taking it. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. Are we doing another one now? No, I'm just kidding. Did you feel it? Feel yes, it? I did. I did can, feel it. Can you tell any difference between the bicycle and the water base? I can. Good. Softer? Softer, yeah. yeah. Smoother. Softer. It's like more into the fabric of the shirt. Yes, it definitely is. We need to run off some more so that way we can do a test wash with 
this ink and then see how how much it softens up. All right. So we need to order some. Twist my arm. <laughs> One of the great things about water-based ink is that you can clean up with just water. Now our screen is all nice and clean. We can tuck it away and reuse it for next time. Thanks for tuning in, I really appreciate it. Until next time, we'll see you later.